I have several recordings of the Mozart Bassoon Concerto in my vinyl collection. In addition, I also own several CDs of the concerto. Despite the time and cost of creating all of these recordings, it appears that we still don't have a recording of the work with all of Mozart's notes and with style, ornamentation, and free embellishment appropriate to the classical period. In this video, we will discuss aspects of ornamentation and free embellishment. I hope that it will open your understanding on the topic. Perhaps you will be the person in the future to present the Mozart Bassoon Concerto in its full glory. Part of your education should include a study of ornamentation. This is especially needed since composers from the Baroque period produced volumes of works for the bassoon. Performers who present Baroque compositions without ornamentation are equivalent to jazz musicians who perform jazz without improvisation. Neither is historically correct. You might find helpful my video series on ornamentation. Concert reviews and publications in the early 1700s into Schubert's time in the 1820s and beyond indicate that vocalists regularly added free embellishments to the music, not singing exactly what was on the page. There is thus an unbroken tradition of free embellishment from the Baroque period through Mozart and to later composers in the early Romantic period. Thus an informed performance of the Mozart Bassoon Concerto must include ornamentation beyond that already written in the music. Here are some important publications from that time period to consider. Also of interest are these articles by Robert Levin. We should give special thanks to John Miller and his Bassoon Symposium for supplying us with an article by eminent scholar Frederick Newman on works for bassoon. If you don't have time to read the texts I just recommended, you need to read the transcription by David Ross on a lecture given by Dr. Newman. This article provides a quick summary of ornamentation in Mozart's music for bassoon. An online version of the text is available on archive.org. The figures, however, are missing in this free version, so you need to gain access to the article either through joining the International Double Read Society or finding a copy of the journal. Newman, in his lecture, makes an important observation that Italy, rather than northern Germany, provides the influence for ornamentation in Mozart's works. Mozart's father made three extended trips to Italy with the young Wolfgang between 1769 and 1773. Wolfgang's love of opera also is further evidence of the influence of Italian composers. It is not surprising then that W.A. Mozart's music is characterized by vocal qualities, including choices of ornamentation. The Newman article contains many examples of ornaments in the concerto. Time doesn't allow for me to discuss them all, so I will just present one example in this video and one in the next. Please note that Newman gives these as recommendations, not rules. The most important ornament in Baroque, classical, and even Romantic music is the appoggiatura. This ornament creates one of the most powerful expressive gestures in common practice music, and often is the goal of musical phrasing. If you have time to study just one ornament, this is the one. Quantz thinks so highly of the appoggiatura that it is listed first among all ornaments in his treatise. The word appoggiatura comes from the Italian 
appoggiare, to lean. Appoggiaturas are metrically stressed dissonances. Often these appear on downbeats. These notes have stress and weight. Let's examine the opening of the second movement bassoon solo. In the Urtext edition, we find three grace notes, which here are placed in red circles with the main notes. In figure 24, Newman provides the Urtext edition on top and his notation on the bottom. Although the notation on the top appears similar, the end result below is quite different. The first two grace notes are played before the beats. In the last example, however, the grace note is played on the beat. The only way to understand why this is the case is to examine the harmony. Note that the bassoonist needs to be aware of the notes in other instruments, not just in the solo bassoon part. Without an understanding of the harmony, there cannot be an appropriate choice. Here is the earth text edition with markings for harmony and appoggiaturas. The first grace note is a chord member, G4 is part of the C major chord. Thus, this note is not a dissonance and cannot be an appoggiatura. Appoggiaturas are always dissonances. Because the first grace note is not a dissonant, it must be played before the beat. The second grace note is similar to the first. It is also not a dissonance. This grace note must be before the beat. The appoggiatura is on B flat 3 and is already written into the music. The last grace note, however, is a dissonance and should thus be played as an appoggiatura on the beat. It is a stressed note that is played with a 16th note value. Notice that the appoggiaturas are goals of gestures in the solo. The notes prior to the appoggiaturas musically lead to them. Although the last grace note in print appears to be less important than the surrounding notes, it should in fact be emphasized by the performer with significant weight. In the next video, we will examine appoggiaturas with trills. Thank you.